Welcome back everybody. So the good news is we finally got all of our bits. So this week we're gonna show you the changes we're gonna to make to the vehicle before we go, tell you some of the things you might wanna know, and hopefully hit the road for Morocco. So first job we're on with is something I've been meaning to do for a while, and that's install a dash cam. Now, I've never had one, but all the reels I watch lately with car accidents and people driving off and things like that, and the fact that we're going to Morocco, I thought just for a peace of mind, if we have something like this, better safe than sorry, eh? So we've gone for, we're claiming it's a VIFO. Yeah, I'm making it up. No, no, but it's the A19 V3 Quad HD Plus. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah 110 quid from amazon i did loads of research and this one come out quite good so it just takes a what was it ssd SD. no sd sd ssd it. it takes a card in the side anyway so yeah just powered by a usb lead now let's get it in make that, sure it's straight is that square no it's not square is that square <laughs> no it's not that? square oh my god now i'm not going to tell you much about it because i haven't really used it and i don't want to say it's any good and if it's not but i'll give you a bit more of you when we're on the road is that square no nightmare you are i'll do so another easy to install safety feature we'd like to take with us is big bad bry can anybody remember him this is the hoover that everybody needs Sorts out all the crumbs you drop in the kitchen. <laughs> well, Big Bad Bry really is oh, Big Bad Bry now. Unfortunately, he can't come with us to Morocco because he's not actually our dog. He's John's mum and dad's. But he gets a lot of requests, so we thought we'd better give him an appearance. You gonna say hello to the people, buddy? Ryan. Oh, oh, hello. How are you? <laughs> But while we're on the subject of safety, I wanted to talk to you about what we're doing for phones and internet while we're in Morocco. And to do that, I need to bring in this week's sponsor, which is Surfshark. Surfshark is a virtual private network and it keeps all your information safe online by encrypting everything that's sent between your device and the internet. So the way I like to look at it is this is all your information and this is where I've got to get it to. And Surfshark create this secure pipe so I can send all my information through it and nobody can get to it. So usually on the road, we can just use our phones as normal, but unfortunately our package won't work in Morocco. So what we'll be doing is getting a local SIM and putting it in an old phone that we can hotspot to and using public Wi-Fi as much as possible. But the problem is using public Wi-Fi makes you much more susceptible to hackers because it makes it much easier for them to get into your devices and access your information. So the way I like to look at that is this is your public network pipe and there's so many joins in it that when you're putting your information through it, a lot of people can get to it to steal your information. But fortunately, even with a public network, Surfshark can plug all the access points, which means all your information can get through safely without anyone stealing it. Which means we'll be able to use public Wi-Fi with no worries while we're traveling. Another feature of Surfshark is that it allows you to swap your real location for a virtual location anywhere around the world. Now this helps to keep you safe online, but one of the more fun ways you can use it is to access more TV shows and movies within your existing subscriptions. So we've told you before that we love the TV series Outlander. The only trouble is we can't get it for free on any of the streaming services we use, and this is where Surfshark comes in. All I have to do is change our virtual location to the US, which by the way, has one of the best Netflix libraries in the world, and boom, there it is. So if you wanna keep your data safe online and you wanna be able to browse the whole world's catalog for a new series to binge watch, Surfshark is the one for you. You can try it risk-free with their 30 day money back guarantee. And they've got an extra three months for free if you use the code TRUEBLUE at the checkout. I'll put a link in the description for you. So thankfully, the vital supplies have arrived to keep the general happy. So the next thing we're on with doing is switching out the mattresses because this is the mattress that comes with the alley cab and it's only seven centimeters thick and it's not very comfy. We all know how important it is that I get a good night's sleep. So we're switching it out for this mattress, which is still only 11 centimeters thick, but it's the same one that we used in the Sainsbury's build and it is so comfy. So let's get this bad boy cut down and put in. I'll tell you what, this is the new way we're always gonna cut mattresses from now on. Absolutely brilliant. Hey. 
beautiful. Look at that. So we didn't know very much about mattresses until we started chopping them apart to build campers. But the reason this one's not very comfy is because it's a single layer of the same density foam. Whereas this one's got three different layers. It's got a firm layer at the bottom, a squidgy layer in the middle, and then a super soft squidgy layer on top. So if you're looking for a thin, comfy mattress for your camper, you can't go wrong with this one. It's only 90 quid off of Amazon. So the only trouble we've got now is the old cover's a bit too big. So I'm just gonna run a seam down either side and that should keep it nice and snug. That is so much better. So hopefully that'll keep her happy anyway, the old princess, but I think it's about time we do something we haven't done for a while. So can anyone guess what's coming? A bit of triple T. Tool Talk Tuesday. So this one I've been meaning to speak about for a while. It's one of my favorite tools I've got and also one of the cheapest as well. Now this is a plastic welding gun and they're only about 25 quid from Amazon. Brilliant little bit of kit. But basically, if you've ever got two bits of broken plastic, like maybe a fairing or like a wheel arch or anything plastic, what you normally do to, to repair it is you'd get a soldering iron, wouldn't you? And then you'd use the soldering iron to go along the plastic and sort of like melt it together, which sort of does the job, but it doesn't last very long and doesn't stay very strong. So what you get is you get these little things. Now, these are tiny little metal clips and you get loads of different star ones as well with the kit. And then all you do is you just slot it in there. Now, this gun doesn't need time to heat up or anything like that. You just plug it in it straight away. And then all you do is you press the trigger. And as soon as I press it, watch how quick this heats up. Now you see the smoke. And then obviously what it's doing is creating a short circuit, which then gets that little clip red hot. So, and then once it's like that, you can put it in the plastic and it melts in and creates like a real secure join. So I'll show you how it works. So just get your two bits of plastic together and make sure they're butted right up to each other. And then you press your trigger on your, your gun and see it starts to get hot. And then all you do is you press it into the plastic and you'll see it start melting in. Now you just gotta be a little bit careful because you don't wanna go all the way through. You wanna go about halfway through so it's in the middle of it. And then you let it cool down and then you just pull it out and then you've got your two little prongs there, but it's real solid. And then all you do is you go along with however many of these little clips you want. And it's almost like stitching it all together. And then that's it stuck together. And it gives an, a, such a solid joint, it's unbelievable. And then all you've got to do is you just get a pair of snips and then you just snip off the actual tags on it like that. And then all I like to do as well, once you've done that, because they're a bit raised, I like to just grind them off with a grinder. And then I just get a soldering iron and then just melt the plastic sort of back into over the clips. So it's then stopping the clips coming out as well. And then also the actual join of the plastic where the crack is, I then go along that as well like that. So it really does secure it all in nicely. So you know what I'm gonna say, don't you? Brilliant little bit of kit for the workshop. So now we've got the important business out of the way. The next one I want to talk to you about is this little beauty. And this is a must for all campers. It's definitely not a must. It's become an obsession of mine. Like before we had one, I never was interested in outdoor to indoor temperature. Whereas now I'm absolutely fascinated by it. It gives me some sort of sense of achievement knowing that I've made it warm inside when it's cold outside when we're outside, if you know what I mean. <laughs> So, welcome to life with John, everybody. But all it is is just a little thermostat, and then you get this outdoor sensor as well. Um, only 24 quid from Amazon, but I love it. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. <laughs> and whilst we're on about temperature as well, I want to talk to you about the night heater and the afterburner because I don't know if anyone noticed last week when we were doing the, the van tour, I fitted an afterburner unit in it and I didn't install that in the build. So, let me explain how I've done that. So I know I've explained a little bit about how the afterburners work and everything like that, but I'll have to go through it again just so that you understand about the night heater that I've got in the, the Defender. So this is your standard controller you get with all night heaters. And they say that the night heaters are thermostatically controlled, whereas they're not. Like you turn it up to 17 degrees, the night heater will run to 17, and rather than stop, it will just run on low power. So it just bakes the in the vehicle. So obviously where we're in the Defender and it's a small space, you'll put it to 17, it'll heat to 17, and then, because it keeps going, before you know it, it's like 30 degrees. So you'll manually turn it off, 
then before you know it, it's back freezing again because obviously the rooftop tent and all the heat getting out and everything like that. So a bit of a nightmare. So this is where these controllers come in really good because you'll turn it up to say 17 degrees, it'll hit 17 degrees, turn off, then when it drops below say 15 degrees, it'll come back on again. So it just keeps everything a lot more comfortable. Now the only issue with these is they don't communicate with every night here. Now they do with all the Lavender Pros, that's why I really rate these and they're real good quality as well. But when I tried to install this on the night heater that I've got on the Defender, it didn't work. But don't worry, there's an easy fix. So all you need to do is change out the control unit in the night here, which is a really easy job. All you've got to do is take the top cover off, there's a screw on the top and then a couple of plugs as well. And then when you change this out, then it will then communicate with your controller. So these are only about 20 quid off of eBay. So no matter what night heater you've got, you can always get a control unit to make it work. It's time for a bit of Tetris. I think we were a bit spoiled in the old Sainsbury's van with how much space we had, but now I need to get this into this. Wish me luck. Well, we've done it. She's all in and we've got a bit of space to spare. So happy days, we can take some clothes and don't have to see John in the nut anymore. But best bit is the last piece of the puzzle has just arrived. So I'll get John to show you that little beauty. Now this is what we've been waiting for. So this is a spare wheel carrier for the spare wheel on the door. Now when I built the camper, I had a lot of people message me and say with all the weight of the wheel on the door, when you're going off road, it can break the hinges, it can break the panel, it can even break the door. So I had a look round and there's a few different models about. This is the most expensive one at an eye water in 720 quid, but I definitely think it's the best on the market. So I'll show you why I think so. So she's on and she fits a treat. Now, for me, the reason that I went for this ORE spare wheel carrier is because well, for a start, the engineering is beautiful, but also you don't have to drill any other holes in the body or anything like that. Whereas when you get the cheaper versions, it mounts at the bottom, but also at the top here on the panel. So you have to drill the panel. And I dare say they'd be all right, but I just don't like the idea of all the weight still being on this panel. Whereas now with this one, all the weight is on the bottom cross member. And for me, if you're towing a trailer, obviously your tow bar is bolted to your rear cross member. So all your weight is where where it should be really so yeah well impressed on the road again she's always stealing my thunder she just <laughs> said to me can i do the on the road again thing you always do it i think i do it better don't you anyway what do you think of my hairdressing skills this week <laughs> so she said to me she had to cut the hair because she didn't like the mullet and then she gave me this no yes I, no no and then we laid in bed last night i sat still this time and everything it right didn't. and i'm laid in bed last night just on my phone she looks at me and she went I messed your hair up this time. You look like a ripe pleb. I keep telling him to go to the barbers, but also I said to him three times, are you sure this is the style you want me to do? Are you sure you want it this short on top? So he's only got himself to blame. But you know who she thinks I look like? <laughs> Have you ever seen um, The Young Offenders? We love that show. Jock and, uh, what's his Connor. name? Connor. <laughs> you have to start trying to talk with an Irish accent. Yeah. <laughs> Viewer discretion advised. Viewers have previously reported they found content similar to what you're about to watch offensive. Top of the morning to you there, laddie. Over here is this girl here. Her name is Jessica. And that, that, that handsome looking fella there, that's John. We make up the True Blue Travellers. <laughs> and we're travelling around in our Defender and we're off to Morocco. Why do you sound like 
like a pirate. John's the kind of fella, he'd do anything for a friend like, except he don't got no friends. This is the kind of thing what happens when we've got a long drive to go. But we is best friends. We've made it to the Eurotunnel, but we seem to have brought the weather with us. It's rained the whole way here, but I'm already missing a sprinter because I need a wee and John doesn't want me kicking in him in the head, climbing over the top. And he's told me on this trip, I've got to make more use of public restrooms. Not sure how I feel about that one, but I'm going into the Le Chateau terminal building for the first time. And John says, I have to give you a toilet rating. So I'll be back in a minute. Look at this silicon. Do you reckon you'll be impressed? These toilets. Posh. Oh, it is disgusting out there. Well? Uh, nice toilets. Very posh, actually. I'd give them a 9 out of 10, I reckon. What about the silicon around the urinals? What, in the men's toilets? Funnily enough, didn't check those out. Bonjour. Let's see the food. Bonjour, Madame et Monsieur. Bienvenue en France, where it's still raining, and if anything, it's probably worse than it was in England. So we've knocked a couple of hours off our journey south, and we've made it to a place just outside of Rune, I think it's called. But for dinner tonight, we've got the old French delicacy. Can't be a good old French stick, because can't be bothered cooking. So we're gonna eat this, hit the hay, we'll see you guys in the morning. We're back, baby, we're back. Tell you what, you can't beat being on the road, and there's something about being in a tent and listening to birdsong in the morning that's just brilliant. I think this is going to be a good trip. I think we best get the general up. Well, I am a happy little princess. That mattress was well worth the wait. We had such a good night's sleep. But I've just realised we haven't told you what the plan is. So let's hit the road and I'll tell you what's going on. So, as you all know, we're headed to Morocco and we're gonna drive down through France and Spain. We're gonna take probably about a week to get down there. And to be honest, that's because the weather is still pretty rubbish up here. So we're gonna get down to the sunshine as quick as we can. We're gonna see some cool things along the way, but we'll take our time coming back up when hopefully the weather's a bit nicer. However, I am taking us on a bit of a detour for tonight's activity. And for those of you who know me well, you can guess what that detour will probably be. So we've made it to the first stop. And have indeed. Chateau. Uh, D something that I will put in writing because I can't pronounce it. I'll show you on the map. I thought you were learning your French. <laughs> yeah, no, not enough to pronounce <laughs> the name of this place. But um, what I love about France is no matter how many times you come, there's a million chateaus over oh. here, so you can see a different one every time. Yeah. But and um, there's so many that aren't even on the tourist trail as well. Like you were driving along, like, oh my God, look at that, look at that. It's so cool. But I've got a bone to pick with you lot again. Just put a story on the Instagram. <laughs> Somebody said to me, loving the bowl cut. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you mean. <laughs> Why would you look outside yourself when you have all of the world inside? One, two, three, four. Yeah, your heart is a sun and it shines. Is it open? Where well, your heart is the sun and it shines. Is it open? Yeah, your heart is the sun 
and it shines as it opens. Where well, your heart is the sun, and it shines. Well, did you know there was over 40,000 chateaus in France? I didn't know that. Have you just she made it didn't up? Know. No, I actually Googled it. Oh, look at him getting the facts. But I do love a chateau, and I have to say, I think one day we might have to buy one, eh? Oh, my goodness. We were talking when we came out here, because there's so many, like, ruined buildings and things in France. They still look so beautiful. I don't know how it is that they can be half fallen down and still look beautiful, but, oh... Could you imagine getting something and just bring it back to life? But I wouldn't want to own it. I'd want to buy it, like just do it up and then sell it straight away. Why? Well, we have to have every room at 22 degrees. Yeah. Can you imagine keeping a chateau? We need to be billionaires to keep it warm enough. But I think we would suit right in with the old chateauers anyway. You reckon we're be fancy people? Well, no. Because when you look at the artwork, right, on all the chateaus, <laughs> they're either fighting or causing a ruckus. Yeah, fair play Which there. I love a bit yeah. of. I love a bit of bowl cuts, and that's what it is that. <laughs> and they've always got a bit of nudity as well. They so. do always have the nuddies. What is it with the poshos and a bit of nuddy? They love it, don't right they? my street. And I think Jess would fit in a treat as well. <laughs> because the Frenchies love a tash, so just don't shave for a week and you'll be all right. <laughs> You're such a bugger! <sighs> this is what we needed. For any of you Welshies watching, John, no! <laughs> oh yes, now we're talking. You know why uh, I think you'd fit in with the Frenchies a bit as well? Because I like baguettes. No. Pastries? No. Cheese? Well, you do, but none of them. Why? Because they spend their life going wee wee, wee wee. <laughs> That is one of your worst dad jokes Go on, the dad joke. <laughs> and I've been getting a bit of stick lately as well because I haven't been doing my jokes, so... Oh, God, here we go. I've got one for you. Are you ready You've for this? You've just done a bad joke. Do we really need another one? What's the difference between light and hard? Light and hard? No. Well, one... I don't know what. I can sleep with the light on. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> Because I can't sleep. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking as well, the old chateaus and defenders got a lot in common. The roofs cost a fortune, they're always springing leaks, constant maintenance, but they look the part. As we've been driving around France, we've noticed that lots of the signs as you go into and out of towns are upside down. So I had a bit of a Google and it turns out it's part of the protests going on over here with the farmers at the moment. And they say they've done it because they're sick of getting conflicting information from the government and they feel like they're walking around on their heads. So if my pronunciation's off, we're going to blame it on the fact that I'm reading the signs upside down and back to front and not that I'm terrible at French. So some of you might have already guessed where our two-hour detour has led us. This is the Grill Inn, and it's my favorite restaurant chain in the whole world. Just so happens to be an all-you-can-eat buffet. I haven't eaten all day in preparation for this. I'm so hungry, I can barely see. I've had to be on best behaviour today because we've just not eaten all day. She told me her patience is as thin as her waistline. We've got some business to attend to. Give me five. OK, maybe give me 20. I can talk to you now. I can't breathe because I'm so full, but I can talk to you now. If you ever come to France, you absolutely have to come to one of these. It works out at about 20 quid a person and it has the widest selection. So it's got your like usual ready-made bits and salad bar, but the cake selection, particularly being France, is absolutely beautiful. Then there's ice creams, like there's an ice cream parlor and even sweets and stuff as well. But you can even get like steak and they freshly cook it or you can have noodles where you select everything that goes in it and they freshly cook it on the grill. It is absolutely banging. But I think we're going to have to leave you there because I'm about this far from a food coma. So we need to find a park up. Hopefully we'll meet you guys in Spain next week. But don't forget about the Surfshark link in the description or you can click this QR code just here.